Kyle, that's that's one of my first questions about prison. And I don't want to I don't want to get into this unless you don't want to talk about it. So don't answer. If you oh no, it's going to be a whole topic for some okay, time. Right. The oh, yeah. reason I want to I, I want the first question is: Do people talk about why they're in there? Is that a thing that um, everybody talks? about? They don't talk about they don't they don't bring it up but but if I got comfortable with somebody I would ask them yeah, um, yeah that makes, you that know makes sense. or if I didn't feel like they were a scary person mm -hmm. I would just ask them right away like yeah, yeah. the 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 gay guy that's like right next to me one cell on the other side of Terry Cruz's brother in law uh, I was I was like what the fuck are you in here for man he's like I was selling a little cocaine and I was like mm -hmm. how much is a little a couple ounces <laughs> I was like ah oh, oh, okay that sucks yeah, that'll do it that'll do it how long <sighs> right around two years. Two ah, years. Holy yeah. shit. Just for trying to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I got mixed up with those machinima guys. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Kyle, you want a prison question? Yeah, sure, sure. You said there were people from Atlanta that were way worse. There was an Atlanta minimum security prison, but it was like yes. way more hardcore. Homeless yeah. people. What was the scoop with that? All right. So um they didn't put me in the Atlanta camp, I think, because they don't want people too close to their homes for whatever reason, which yeah. seems like bullshit. Because what if, like, I was in there for five years and I wanted to visit my family, but they were six hours away. Yeah. But uh, but there were guys who had been transferred to Talladega from Atlanta's camp, and quite a few of them. So I got it from like multiple sources what that camp was like there. And, there, and they were like, "Man, it's wilding out." And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, I'm like, tell me more." He's like, "Well, <laughs> shit." We got everything in there. They we got fucked up though. Snitches told on us. They shut it all down. I was like, what did you have? Everything. I was like, all right, well, what does everything mean? We want to go out and party. So we get a hobo to come in and sleep in our bed. That way they come through and count. N word is sleeping in my bed. So it's all good. <laughs> if you there, they don't care. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You can just leave? No, you can't just leave. They're not gonna, but they don't. But they just walk by with a flashlight at night and count bodies. They're not. Holy they don't shit. recognize you. So well, how did they get the, out? I think that they were. I, th I know at one point there wasn't even a fence around that camp. Like wow. some of the camps, like especially in the north, don't have a fence. We had like that big, scary twelve foot fence with the razor wire on the top and the bottom, and you had that. I thought poor. you didn't. I thought I didn't too. There were a lot of lies about that place online. Like all of the programs that they said that we were going to have, like like they only exist for the medium security guys. And so people will transfer to Talladega because they're like, yeah, I want to learn to be a fucking graphic artist. That'd be cool. I'm out in a year and a half. I need a job that you know won't won't discriminate. And they're like, oh, that's only for medium security. So they're like, well, can I can I go to to Pennsylvania? They I think they have it. They're like, yeah, yeah, you can transfer in eighteen months. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, so then we get ninety three dollars a day off your ass. Go find a bunk and get a job. <laughs> this is like, Holy this shit! Is slavery. Um. So so there were um. They would leave and actually go party. They would bring girls into the prison. They said sometimes they would literally bring whores in, and then they had like all of the drugs That's and awesome. alcohol. But but we had yeah, all the proof. drugs and alcohol too. Oh, that's that's insane. Insane. Man, maybe wow. prison's not Wait, so did bad. you say you, you said you had something in alcohol? <laughs> that you had whores and alcohol? Drugs and alcohol. We had oh. drugs and alcohol. Like like every drug you can name, and alcohol, and cigarettes, and cell phones. Like all of that was like everywhere in in Talladega. Like like it so was the just, alcohol. You guys didn't. It wasn't like prison made alcohol. It was professionally made alcohol. You imported. I when I asked about it, they said I, I was like I was like do they had because I was reading a Stephen King book where they were talking about um, making alcohol out of prunes and raisins in prison and i and so i asked the a guy that was near me i was like do they do that here he's like they don't have to they got jim beam and vodka they got it they, they have real alcohol mm. and i was like well how much is it he's like you want some and i was like no 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 i don't well maybe how much is it <laughs> <laughs> and he's like eight dollars a shot and i'm like fuck that. that's a good hey, deal that's not that's, bad at that's all cheaper than that's los angeles that's los angeles yeah it's, it's bar prices yeah, yeah. yeah tucker's just getting just wasted <laughs> <laughs> <Blacked out. laughs> at these Bringing prices them. i can't afford it not to be <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they would explain that you could really just get away with anything there and that there was it was just rampant with with people like leaving and going out and partying and and like going to go into strip like their friends would just pick them up off on a road that was nearby and take them off to town and they'd go get burgers and go to a hotel and fuck their girlfriends at the hotel or whatever. And it, it, I was like, was it, that doesn't sound like here at all. They're like, nah, it sucks here. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what a bummer, man! You the, get uh, sent to a sucky prison. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the workout equipment last week. I kind mm -hmm. of alluded to it, but so we had obviously we had a running track and they had sports. You know, they they had a softball field and they had uh they would play like pickup football. Actually, it was organ. It wasn't even pickup. It was organized flag football with teams. One of the teams' name was the Woodlayers, and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Were they right? gay? It's I had to process. I don't. I don't ask. Don't ask. Don't tell, Woody. Right. And so they uh, they would go out there and they play football, but it was hot as fuck out there. I, I couldn't believe they weren't just heat stroking out in that hundred degree bullshit. And there was like medicine balls, and uh, and then there were uh, like there was like one good elliptical, one decent treadmill, and like some shitty ellipticals that had no resistance. Even you were just on this green thing doing this mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> And then that was it. And I was like, well, shit, what do you do for like, or there was chin up bars and dip bars, but there was no free weights. And I was like, what do they do? And, and my buddy's like, I'm over here, I'll show you. We go out there and these guys have gotten big rocks, like the ones that, that like re retain an area to keep from washing away. Mm -hmm. And they have taken them to the scales and weighed them and written with magic marker what they weigh on them. So every rock you look at in the gully says 25.5. 32 pounds, 16 <laughs> pounds, big rocks. Yeah. They're big. Like the retaining rocks you like put okay. to like keep water from washing a gully away. And they would take these, uh, these bags and fill them up with rocks and they put them on either end of a pipe and they're out there doing bench press and <laughs> curls with a pipe full of rocks. So why these would, bags why, of rocks? Why wouldn't they give awesome. them free weights? Was it because they were worried that the, they would like hurt each other with them? Or that's what they would say if you asked. That's the same reason they said that we didn't have a pool table. But they give us padlocks and socks, so yeah. that's bullshit. We've got we got big right. long tube socks and, and we've got padlocks. What's safe about giant rocks? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, let them go play with the rock pile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so every. Just... Every morning I'd go out there uh, to the track, you know, like crack of dawn and I, I'd start my start my start my run and I'd look and here came the same guy with a wagon, like a big like uh, the kind of wagon you would use around a greenhouse is the only way I know to describe it. in high school. We, I remember seeing that it was like a big heavy duty wagon full of rocks and because you got to put them back. You can't just right. leave the rocks up in the workout area like they're real big on cleanliness and neatness. And so and, and this I was asking my buddy, I was like. That guy's the rock guy, I guess. He's like, he's like, he's lost like 200 pounds. We got here. He was like 450. Now look at him. And I'm like, still looks pretty fat to me. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good look. <laughs> he could really benefit from the gym that's like, you know, not just like rocks and pipes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, and, and then guys would be doing like, burpees and you know sit-ups and push-ups and uh, and lots of stuff like that most people worked out in pairs so you could motivate the other guy it seemed like yeah. that was very common that that you know you one guy would often know more than the other guy and he, like there there were a couple guys in there who were just like specimens you could tell was like, snow like, this, a specimen like that no i would say he was just bulky and strong um that, but there were some of these guys who were just like they look like brad pitt and uh and troy like like just real ripped up and like like a tiny tiny waist and just real just real symmetrical good looking guys who were just out there doing dips all day and man that's that's all I would do if I went to jail that's yeah, all yeah, I would do I would just that what else are you gonna do yeah I would just I mean, live work out six seven hours a day lift rocks, rocks. Yeah, yeah lift rocks why not call me Fuck Fred Flintstone bitch <laughs> 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 rock in each hand they would do that too they just have a rock in each hand and they'd be doing all sorts of like <laughs> that's I, the those are the free weights you just yeah. <laughs> for real i can I see swear. myself going either way really like there's there's a version of me that might just hit the gym hard and, and get, there's a version of me that might just get a little depressed and sleep and do nothing yeah, it's a long day sleep you wake up like eventually and need energy, something to yeah. do I uh, I read a lot. I read a lot. Uh, mostly mostly reading. That's almost uh, exclusively what I did for sure. You have access to the internet at all, or no? Not really. Not really. Yeah. Not like the real internet. Like we had internet, but it did lame things. Like you could do like a, a email to text thing, so yep. you could text somebody, and then they would email you back when they returned the text. Mm -hmm. I didn't really bother with that. I just used the phones. You got like fifteen minute phone calls, oh. three hundred months a month. 
Um, well, three minutes, I'm up there. The phone is and, one of my questions, Kyle. How did that work? Like, is it a common area? On TV, mm-hmm. sometimes there's people waiting for the phone, and if you're on it and I'm a tough guy, I might be wanting to boot you. Like, what is the phone like? Um, it's a little room you go into that's not very far from the dorm, uh, just a stone's throw. And uh, you go in there. It, it's got air conditioning. It's very small. It's about the size of this room I'm in right now. And there's eight phones, I think, in there, maybe 10, just along the walls, maybe four on this side, four on this side, four on that side, something like that. Uh, and you dial the number you want to call. You dial your prison number, um, it's, which is like a nine-digit number that identifies yourself. And then it asks you to repeat your name back to it and when the, at the tone. And the voice recognition sucks dick. So like I'd have to make like 10 phone calls in a row. It would take me 15 minutes to make a five-minute phone call. Because I'm just calling it over and over. I'm like, Kyle Myers. Yeah. Didn't understand that. Sorry. Try again. And gets, oh, fuck, maybe next time. <laughs> huh? Nope. Not going to understand you at all. Try again later. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> click, 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 and just go again. And, and, uh, but yeah, it's, this guy's in there. It's usually real loud. I try to pick off times to make my phone calls so it's not so goddamn loud in the room because it's, it, they're real depressing phone calls. Of course. You know, it's, it's like, Sometimes it's funny. You know, I remember I, I remember distinctly one of the early times I was in, he's like, yeah, baby, you need a gangster in your life. And I'm thinking like, does she though? <laughs> <laughs> he's calling from jail. Yeah. <laughs> like, so is he trying he to be seduce an... someone for his yeah. soft landing? Yeah. I like yeah, it. I like his gumption. I mean, yeah. for him. <laughs> I mean, there are women out there who want to fuck Charlie Manson. There are. There she are. She shot. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, it, it sucked. You got, like I said, you got 15 minutes and then the phone starts doing this little countdown bullshit. It gives you these little tones to let you know that any minute now you're running out of time and we're just going to hang the fuck up on whoever this is. And, uh, and unless you're calling locally, it's expensive. Um, like a dollar a minute or something like that. To Ooh. you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah and and you've got to reload. It's always collect. No, it, um, I don't even think that's an option because because this this <laughs> way the prison gets the money. Call from help! I'm being raped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Help! Yeah. <laughs> I'm being raped. Is that Turkish? What is? Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that they that the federal prison system wants to get as much money out of you as they can. So like it comes right out of your commissary fund. You there's a little process in which you transfer money from commissary fund into your phone fund, and. Uh, one and of the yeah, problems goes, with prison, like you said, get the money out of you. It, most people exit prison, even if they just do two months, which is a low yet. Most people do more. You do six months in prison, you come out broke. Most people can't like, they don't have a six month emergency fund that they can mm. tap into and they exit and suddenly it's not a problem like renting their next apartment and such. Like they leave in dire straits and right. that's part yeah, of that's the why Yeah, that's why they put them in the halfway house, uh, I think. That's one of the main reasons, you know. Um, and they can give you like a year of halfway house. So, and that comes right off your sentence too. That's not like an in addition type thing. So a lot of those guys like, like Snow, for example, he's really trying to get them to give him as much halfway house as possible. So, and, and as much home confinement in addition to that as possible. So he can get out like early next year. Cause he's been in there for fucking 10 years, or whatever the fuck. Jesus. So, so, so basically you just like your, your account, like, let's say you have a savings account. You just take your savings account with you to prison, and then you're just whittling away at that account. Or no, you uh, you use like Western Union. You get somebody on the outside to like wire the money into your prison account. Um, and so, uh, you know, I had plenty of money, but you can you ever give a spending limit, even in the commissary. It's like, ah, oh, well, you can only spend one hundred twenty dollars every two weeks or something like that, or one hundred eighty, mm-hmm. I think it was, something like that. Yeah. Did anyone? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe not you, but like, did anyone in the prison use other people as their like pay pigs? Like, like, you know, Hey, if you want to feel safe, you keep me rolling in potato chips or something. No, I didn't see anything like that. Um, people were real honest about, um, like making promises like, Hey, Hey, could you give me a little bit of this and I'll buy you something for, for that, like commissary day. And they would always like actually make that happen. There was a lot of like on commissary day, like, like each dorm had a different commissary day. So if I don't get to shop until Wednesday, but it's Monday and you get to shop, I could be, hey, man, will you get me four bags of chili and some raisin bran? And, you know, that that would happen. And then um, when it's when it's my turn, I will buy him, you know, $18 worth of shit, too. And that, that's a pretty common thing that would happen. Or if you had gambling debts, you you could handle those. If you didn't, if they didn't want Max, which is the packets of mackerel fish fillets that I talked about, that were kind of currency in there. If they didn't want that, they could also do uh, commissary credit. So, like, yeah, I, 
let me give me your commissary list. I'll I'll put down six dollars for the shit and just bring it to me whenever you know you go. So the so the gambling debts were that was that like gambling debts from within prison? Like basically yeah. they'd Oh wow! Holy shit! Um, yeah, there's that like nobody's like so like loan sharking you from in prison. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I mean, because like basically they were well, I don't know, like shooting dice or probably or like just playing cards poker. or something. Uh, poker, poker, yeah. poker, Monopoly, and uh, and football. Uh, did was you the, play was poker? Uh, a little bit, not much. It, it th they did like this dealer's choice thing where the dealer got to choose the game, and they played a lot of um, how should I put this ghetto games uh, that I'm not familiar with. Um, mm. a lot of nonsense games and I like to play Texas Hold'em pretty exclusively. That's what I always played when I would, you know, play for real money mm. and play online and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm good at that. I think and I always was. And, uh, I don't know how, to, I didn't know how, to, like, like, I don't like Omaha and, and, and they play a lot of like di different kind of pot limit games and they just mix it up. So if you got six guys playing, you might play for half an hour and play one game of Texas Hold'em, which is all I wanted to play. And plus mm. like. I didn't know those people very well either. So like sometimes like, there were scary people in the game and I didn't know they might get upset if I win too much, you know, I, and, that would and plus, be my hold up. Like, I don't want to win a lot. I don't want to lose a lot. Like, <laughs> like I don't want to play, right. I don't want to owe you money. And then suddenly like, that's a danger. I don't want you owing me money. Then like, that's another problem in itself. Right. And, they were pretty chill about that. I, I didn't, okay. I didn't feel like it was going to be a big thing. It was mostly feelings. just, they weren't, Everybody, nah, every, there were a lot of people with good sense of humor. Like, okay. like some guy got his towel stolen one day, his towel, his, his bath towel. And you, you're assigned, I think three brown bath towels. They're garbage. They, they, they remind me of the kind of chamois that you'd like dry your car off with. Uh, and, uh, like, like very, not very absorbent, it's real rough too. and it, yeah, pretty small. And, uh, if you like got them soaking wet and like rang them out, brown liquid would come out because oh. they were like, dyed brown. And uh, <laughs> it was pretty gross. So, and I always thought, like, I bet I'm just, like, rubbing a little bit of that brown dye on me every time I dry off. I'm never actually going to be clean while I'm in here. Uh, but you could buy your own towel uh, from the commissary. And it was, a, it was an okay towel. And uh, it was, I think it was sort of a cream color. And it was better. I don't remember what they cost. I didn't bother to buy one. But this guy's towel got stolen one morning. And he starts screaming, God damn it, y'all. Who going to steal my towel? <laughs> my motherfucking towel was hung up right motherfucking here. I hope you know I've been drying my balls with that towel. I've been wiping my asshole with that towel. And now you're going to wipe your face with it. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, uh, like, like, and he goes on like this forever. And everybody's screaming at him. Ain't nobody going to bring your towel back. Just let it go. <laughs> let it go. They ain't bringing it back. Not that, not, not that you done made a big deal. He's like, I ain't making a big deal. Maybe you accidentally grabbed my towel. I hold no ill will toward you, towel man. <laughs> please, please bring me my towel. And I'm like, God damn, I don't even, if I, you want one of mine, like, 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 like he wanted so bad. And then like 10 minutes later, he goes, excuse me, everyone. A um, little embarrassing. I found the towel. Oh. <laughs> uh, Sorry about all that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool of him, though. Did people laugh? Like, how did it go? Yeah, over everybody's it, laughing their asses off. Of yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was all right. He was in my drug class. He sold crack on the outside. Hmm. Entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was working on it. Right? Yeah, nice guy. Nice guy. He had gold teeth. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a he was a successful fella. crack dealer. He had a good sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. Lost, he really did. You lost over. You lost over something else. The uh, the currency you said that you use yeah, in jail. You what? said it was fish. What yeah, mackerel, it? mackerel fillets in a tear-off pouch. Like uh, you can buy Starkist tuna in those pouches. Is it like uh, I don't know this pouch? I'm picturing like an Altoids tin. Am I? Close? No, no, no. It's it's a it's a a, a metallic pouch that yeah. it's it's got a gusseted bottom, so it'll stand up, and then the top just like a big Capri Sun. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of like that. If you just Google like tuna pouch, like you'll see it. Like it's okay. so. What, like, why did you use those as currency? Uh, I don't, I think. I don't know, but my best guess is that they were one of the more affordable items. They were 70 cents a pouch, and it's one of the fewer meat items that was on the commissary list. And it just seemed like, I don't know, that that's how people did it. You know, they were like, ah, I'll do this for three max. Ah, I won't, how many max you got? You know, it was okay. always about how many max you had. And I didn't even, and, and I was just like, I don't, I don't have any max because they're fucking disgusting. And I don't <laughs> want any either. Yeah. I don't want any. Like, like I, I, I ate mackerel one time when I was there accidentally. Uh, my friend made me this uh, bowl of food. It was like mashed potatoes, rice, and meat. 
with like vegetables in it, like like peppers and onions. And I'm eating it. And I'm think I thought it was chicken. And I'm like, when was the last time we had chicken? <laughs> Four days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's eating it. I he knows best. I. <laughs> I guess oh, I, scales on it. <laughs> yeah, I like what's all this bl black connective tissue? I guess that's the bad part of the chicken. But I mean, how, who am I to? Vectors can't be choosers, you know. And I, I'm like, I eat like three bites of it, and my my next door neighbor goes, "You eating tuna?" And I'm like, "No, I'm eating mackerel." <laughs> and I just mackerel is so it. cheap and shitty. It is. It's really. It's actually really cheap. My girlfriend has those pouches. They're the starkest pouches. That you can you can just get those and eat them, but it, I I would assume it's probably a more generic version of those in prison. Absolutely, I wanted yeah. the chili that we had in there. It's called it's Brushy Creek brand chili in a pouch. I mm -hmm. I I loved it. It was fucking delicious, and I I want to eat it on the outside now. It was so goddamn good. Oh wow! It was like nine dollars a bag to like Holy to shit. like order some or something stupid. Uh, I think I found it for four dollars a bag, but you had to buy a bunch of it too. And I'm thinking like it was two forty in prison. It was two four. It was two dollars and forty cents in prison. How are you going to charge me four dollars out here? I, it's four forty on this website. I was going to ask that, Kyle. Like, so, commissary prices. Let me let me back up a step. Prison income is very low. You guys are working mm -hmm. sometimes. Not you, but the guys are working for less than a dollar an hour. I think eight cents to twenty cents an hour, somewhere in there, depending on the job. So the prices in Ooh. commissary did they scale down at all, or would you find up, up? Yeah, things so, were more expensive than they were in the grocery store could be like 30 hours of work or more. I wish I had a commissary list. Um, uh -huh. I should have brought one because I didn't consider the prices. You may be able to look it up online, but I I didn't really care because like, you know, I'm going to spend what I'm going to spend. If I, if I need toothpaste, well, you know, spare no expense. You got, I see my, you got commissary money. Make it rain. Yeah, I, I'm like you at the fucking movie theater. I'm this fucking Ike and Mike's <laughs> fucking Reese's Pieces. Let's fucking go, baby. Yeah, I want the large cherry Coke. Uh -huh. So... So, you know, it, like, like I remember I had this St. Ives like face moisturizer and it was like $11 for this jar of it like that big. And I was, Were that, you going to not face moisturize? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Prison. <laughs> you got to look your best. Yeah, look I got a gay neighbor yeah. who I'm trying to impress. You know, like and nobody would like like think twice about that because everybody did it. Everybody is like moisturizing and like I, trying to look their best. I Really? Yeah. Well, I. I'm putting something together that's a little racist here. I think that black people are more moisturizing people. Yeah, well, they, they grease up. About that, about white people need to start using lotion because it'll it'll do wonders for your skin. I I I, right. I I I I I would you know there's no privacy. So without staring, you become very aware of your neighbor's daily rituals and like like what they put on themselves and what they do and I'm laughing how your clean. Kerosene, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm about to talk about him. That, that fucking Greg Milton, Gregory Milton, my, my, the, guy, the guy I bumped with, this this 50-something-year-old black fella who's got a huge bald spot on top, and, and it's like bald here, too. He's rubbing this shit in his hair. He's got three goddamn jars of it. It's called, like, Fresh Grow Organic Scalp and Hair Treatment or something like that. And I look, got a good look at it one day, and it looks like a clear gel with bits of plant matter in it and he'd get himself a big goop of this shit and lather up and he'd start rubbing it into his scalp and his hair and it would wake me from my sleep a clear gel with bits of shit. it's like a chia pet baldness cure yeah. <laughs> yes he's trying he to grow his hair back doing his <laughs> best. Yeah. No, he's trying to grow his hair back prison took everything from him but All it right. didn't take his ability to grow back <laughs> all right silly greasing my bald head up gonna grow it back Hell yeah, super freak, super freak. This Don't guy get narrates this everything he does. He narrates his whole life and <laughs> mine. Did, and mine. How did it smell? How, did, it must have smelled. It smelled terrible. like the big fat uh, permanent markers that you can get high off of mixed with oh, kerosene. Hell yeah. Yep. It yep, was yep. a very chemically alcohol, um, like like gasoline kind of smell. Very potent. It, it, I think he could have gotten high off of it. It, it. it was awful, and he'd put it on four or five times a day at least. Jesus! <laughs> oh God. my God! Because he worked out twice a day, and uh, or in the and and sometimes three times a day, and he was always just like coming back in to like wash up and put more on. Thank God he showered well because he stunk. He ate a lot, so he 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 was maintaining. Like, country uh, strong, maybe. The, 
Yeah, kind of you know, <laughs> and he's he's in his he's in his fifties, so like you know, he he looked fun. He looked pretty good for being his fifties. Yeah, dad bod, yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Like, like kind of a big chest, you know, like like a muscular chest, but a little bit of a belly at the same time, and like like you know, big shoulders. Not overweight, but not ripped or anything. He ate a lot, like always eat. The most important question here: Did did his hair grow when you were no, in? No, oh. if anything, he was losing it. He was. Oh. <laughs> that was I, I got a, I got a perfect catalog. angle. I'm up above him in the top bunk, looking down at this back of this guy's head. Can he? He would just get up at night and stand there staring at his locker sometimes for like 10 minutes. And I'd just be like, <laughs> yeah, what was he doing? Here I am staring at my locker. Just staring at, it, just staring at you. <laughs> Can't go to sleep. Can't get away. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Staring Last at my locker thinking joke? about my cute white cellmate. <laughs> 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 i want to know about the commissary shit like like obviously it seems like most of it was like small time just amenities like i need toothpaste i need a toothbrush i need max was there any like really big dick stuff that if you were walking item. back from there they're like he got a george foreman grill son <laughs> of a bitch like any, yeah. any kind of stuff like that yeah um sunglasses were 55 bucks i had me a pair right away hell yeah <laughs> fucking men in black style Okay, because I, I don't go out in real life without sunglasses. Like I always wear sunglasses, and that was a big problem for me when I first got there because I couldn't get the sunglasses right away because of the spending limit. Uh, I just didn't have enough money to get food, clothes, and sunglasses, so I had to wait a week to to be able to get them. And my eyes were so goddamn bloodshot that the nurse tried to have me piss tested because my eyes looked like I was on drugs. And uh, but the guard, I explained myself to the guard, and he was like, "Oh, all right, well get get out of here then. You're not on drugs." I'm like, "Yeah." Can you tell? If I was on drugs, I'd really be enjoying it, though. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be this upset if I were on drugs. I'd love some drugs, I, yeah. but, but I'm not. I'm not on any drugs. Did you partially get the glasses just to rank up your RPG character to make yourself look a little more senior in there? No, I thought they made me look goofy because there were those lame like Nike sports sunglasses. I, 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 I wore them for for like what sun if, protection. I pictured like Ray Ban Wayfarers. Like, am I off? Yeah, That's I would have loved Ray Ban Wayfarers. That's what I wear in real That's life. That's what I choose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was no, the most were... expensive thing you could get at the commissary? I think it may have been the the MP3 player. Um, the MP3 player was probably close to a hundred dollars, and the radio was like seventy dollars. And I got a good pair of headphones. I think the brand is Core K O R R, and they were like thirty dollars or something like that. So your headset and radio of choice would be around a hundred to one hundred twenty dollars. So they would get stolen occasionally. Uh, people yeah. would steal them, and uh, so I, mean, I kept. So like... How'd you get music on it? Like, you know? Yeah, you go over the computer and you download whatever you want, like gangster oh, really? rap or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, I used Spotify a radio. Or... How does it I didn't like... get into that because I used a radio. I, you know, I didn't care oh. to, like, uh, How does it you know, get I just stolen. Like, I, I, in my head, I take what do you yours. Mean, how's it get stolen? Let me explain. I, I take Kyle's stuff. Well, there's Kyle's shit sitting by my bed. Like, like you, if I'm going to steal from like someone. Every... Well, it's not like you get different brands or colors. And you can't distinguish it. You can't, like, take a Sharpie to it or a scratch it Scratching. that'd be smart to do but this well, guy also, hadn't done that also though like if you left let's for example let's say you left your mp3 player like on your bed could somebody else get into your cell while you were gone oh yeah there's no cells Th these are these are bedrooms separated by block walls that don't go to the ceiling like you just oh. walk right in there's no door to your cell at all got it got so it. like oh. so so you lock your fucking locker i locked my locker up one of the first things i was really worried because there was a surprise inspection surprise inspection coming that day we always knew and uh and i was thinking for some reason like lying there in bed i'd gotten really scared that my biggest fear more than rape or assault was what if i have to do more than two months because i've prepared for two i can do the two but what if they were <laughs> to give me six more that would really break my spirit i feel like because i've got I, I can see the end of the tunnel but yeah. if that if i get there and it's like an rpg game and i gotta make a left and and, and like continue my mission i'm gonna lose it and I was terrified that out of spite, somebody was going to get me dirty. Yep. <laughs> yep. They were yep. going to put some fucking drugs or some um, contraband in my locker or maybe either to either to intentionally get me and then maybe even go wrap me out and say, hey, Kyle's got this. Go look. Or maybe they would just be like, oh, shit, they're coming. Uh, white boy's locker. And, and do that and then try to like yeah. come back later and retrieve it from my locker, use my locker as a hiding space. So one morning, my buddy Snow comes to pick me up to go work out. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going to go, man. And he's like, he's like, why? And 
David, my at, at the time I had, th had two cellmates, and David was this Mexican guy, and he explains in Spanish to Snow, so like nobody would overhear, you know, he's afraid that somebody's going to come and put something in his locker. And Snow goes, oh, yeah, they might. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, help me. Wait, so like, was it, was it wide knowledge, like when somebody was going to get out or when you were getting close? Uh, I, you know, people would ask and I'd tell, uh, you know, Snow was like, somebody asked you, you don't say 60 days. You say 60 months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Snow yeah. goes back to his locker and he comes back with a lock and a little post-it with a combination on it. And he, Kuk -kuk, here you go. Here's your, here's your combination. Here's your lock. Let's go work out. And I was like, yeah, I like this guy. I hope he's not the one who's going to get me dirty though because he knows the combination. <laughs> <in my life. laughs> Man, a, a guy named Snow who was in there for trouble with like cocaine distribution is so Methamphetamine, cool. yeah. I'm gonna cocaine's cooler to think about. I'm gonna yeah. okay. I'm okay. gonna run with it. But yeah, yeah. You guys weren't here last week, obviously. But uh, Kyle, you can expound on it a little bit when he got uh, there. People apparently, when you go to prison, you're like, I'm there for two months. They're like, this guy snitched at another prison. He just oh. got transferred here for the last little bit of his stint. Oh and shit! So or he's on that TV cool. show, Sixty Days and Out. There was talk that I was on some sort of fucking reality show, or that. I've watched or that I wasn't a prisoner at all. I was some sort of like undercover or that I was, <laughs> you know, someone who'd snitched somewhere else and was being brought here to, to, to be here or, you know, to do my last little bit or something like that. And, uh, and it, it, I was, I was just like, no, I just yeah, fuck, had a good lawyer. How do, you, <laughs> how do you prove that too? Cause you can't, you, you can't so prove you stab it. someone. You can't I don't have any negative. paperwork. <laughs> like I don't have any paperwork or anything that like shows like, what I'm there, I don't have nothing like like on paper. And if I if I were a real snitch, I could get some fake paperwork. I'm sure if I were some sort of like if you're that sixty days in like guy, you can there probably is some fake paperwork like, here. If I ask you, tell them you're a br seventeen. That means you're you're in you're one of the good ones. You know yeah. they won't they won't mess with you. Meanwhile, those guys get raped. One of those guys got raped. That was on that fucking TV show. Uh, I hope he and hope it was worth it for him. His fifteen minutes of fame were in the, was in the shower. Did he win so, the money? I, I don't know if there's money to be won. There's no money. There's no money. It's did like Survivor get... with syphilis. <laughs> yeah. did, he get, did he get raped because he was on the show? Like they found out he was on the show? I think that they didn't. I think that they just thought he was like a vulnerable guy and they raped him. I don't know the whole story. I'm just positive that one of the guys from 60 Days in got raped while he was oh. in. Oh and, my uh, gosh. And yeah. So, so like, I was real scared about that, about someone, because, because I was, I would have nightmares about it, like, like about getting in trouble, like enough trouble that they give you more time. And, and I think that what would happen, like, if I had drugs specifically is like, maybe I'd have to go back in front of the judge and he would give me like another four months or so, or like, I, I don't know what they could do. I don't know exactly, but it, it wouldn't be good. You know, it, it wouldn't be good at all. And I was real worried about that. So I was very appreciative for snow giving me a fucking lock. You could buy a lock in the commissary, but I was gonna have to wait a whole nother week. And I didn't know if locks were the cool thing to do anyway. Like, like, yo, what you locking your shit up for? You think I'm gonna steal? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> aren't you in here for a Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. How, I'm gonna drive him. away with your free toes. You were yeah. gonna tell us about snow and chomos. What, what was the scoop? Oh there? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the chomo about the, is. Did I tell you about the drawing? No, but the, the audience might not know what a chomo is. Good. A chomo is a child molester. Oh, okay. They've been fucking with him kids. So this guy had been in the medium security prison. He said that the chomos, they hang out in the library because when the newspapers come in, they want to get the ad advertisements, all the coupons and shit, because maybe they get like a Coles catalog with a bunch of little kids in swimsuits, and they were cutting that shit out. Some hot oh, kids. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> oh shit, son! The spring catalog for Huggies is out. The <laughs> boys, <laughs> baby gap <laughs> came in. <laughs> <laughs> Jackpot! Oh, oh my god! Oh yeah, she got her floaties on. Oh Jesus! So, oh. so they're cutting this shit out, and that's their pornography. And uh, and so he was very sensitive to this because apparently they rough those guys up in medium security. That's that's pretty regular. That they've got their own like wing or their own unit. They mm. keep them to themselves because. And imagine if you're just like, I don't. I feel like you should distinguish between sexual crimes, although some people might find that to be offensive. Child molester is a, a bit different than a rapist to me. All right, it, it's yeah. rapists are awful human beings. 
but child molesters at the bottom of the barrel. And to me, like, I don't think you should throw the rapist necessarily in there, especially like maybe the date rapist. Where do you right? stack the, rank murderers in this, Kyle? Ah, uh, you know, I, I'd rather well, chill no with a murderer than a rapist. I don't know if we like, need to tier up. list like all of these crimes. Welcome to but the I, show, I, Tucker. I can agree that, like, you know, like it's. It's like there's different tiers of awfulness, you know, like oh, different tiers of awfulness. Layer of, a hell, of hell, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a Dante's Inferno catalog of of these guys, and, and well, in, and ja in jail, it, it just makes itself apparent. I imagine, right? Like yeah. everybody just is like, this. These are the rules. Like this is what we're doing. Yeah, like, like they don't get if the, if you murdered or you, even if you raped, it, they didn't seem to care. But there, by the way, there were no rapists in there with me. The, at least none of them had been caught for rape. That's a very important thing to distinguish because people are like, oh, nobody's in there with, for violent crime. No, 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 no. Nobody's in there who was found guilty of a violent <laughs> crime. <laughs> <Got> <laughs> there are criminals in there. And, and when you're a criminal, it's, it's like, oh, she's a baker. She's probably never made any cupcakes before, though. It's yeah. like, no, she's probably made cupcakes and cake pops. <laughs> She probably made an ice cream cake one time with a cousin. <laughs> like there was that one time when she 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 made some cupcakes. She's done it all. She's probably made candy too. Yeah. You know? She was actually she... only convicted of solely baking gay cakes. <laughs> <laughs> all, no matter what you asked for, it was very very gay. <laughs> so so one so there are guys in there who like to uh, draw portraits and they'll charge for the service. Very talented guys. Very talented guys and. Uh, one guy would charge five max and he would draw a portrait for you. You gave him a photograph of your loved one. He would draw it. Very cool po portraits. I wish that I had had four photographs to like get that done to. I wish I had like the three of us from the show and like do like a group picture. I thought that would have been like, a prison group That'd picture cool. of the three of us. Yeah. Yeah. So this Indian guy who was actually Terry Cruz's brother-in-law's cellmate, um, Snow called him Indio because he didn't know his real name. He called Isaac Black because he was black. <laughs> 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 Not very creative. And he I called know. you Blanco, which is white. He called me uh, Weto, which Weto, is white. That's right. That's right. Or Sleepy because I slept a lot. Weto <laughs> <laughs> or Sleepy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I had a cool prison name. <laughs> Are you sleepy? Get over here. <laughs> I'm fucking That's one of the seven dwarves. <laughs> like, he, he come here, I meet my homies drowsy and dopey. <laughs> <laughs> and rapey. He <laughs> really, really wants to meet you. <laughs> so he, the Indio wants to draw something for anybody because he, he likes it. So I guess Snow gives him a photograph of Snow's grandson. And so the Indian guy draws it very well, and he gives it back, the drawing. And he's like, yo, what's this right here on my grandson's arm? And he's like, oh, I, I signed it. And he's like, looks like my little grandbaby got a tattoo. My grandbaby don't got no tattoos. He's three <laughs> years old, yo. And he's like, oh, well, I, I always sign them. You know, he's like, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, you know, I, I could just erase it, put it in the corner. How about yes. that? <laughs> Sign the back. And, uh, he's like, yeah, I like that better. You know, we'll sign it somewhere else, maybe. And he's like, all right, cool. I'm going to take it. I'll, I'll move that, and I'm going to make a copy for myself. And he's like, what you want a copy of my grandbaby for? <laughs> <laughs> and so he comes to me the next day, and he's like, yo, I think Indio is a chomo. Oh, fuck. We're, we're out there running, and I'm just like, nah, man. Uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> He's a real chill guy, you know. He's in here for some kind of fucking computer fraud or some bullshit, you know. He's 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 doing finance. He, he's he's like a computer coder, you know. He's just a nerd. He's he's scared, dude. He's told me how, he was. He's a cool guy. I talked to him a lot. He's right next to me. Nah, what's a picture of my grandbaby? I think he's a chomo. <laughs> in medium, we know how to handle the chomos. And I'm just like, man, I don't think you need to be handling nobody, you know. I, I think I think if you just Voice your concerns to him, like, and oh, wait a minute, God damn it, who am I talking to? Yeah, man, maybe he's a chomo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to uh, represent for the family. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't let this get out. You know, it'd be a real dishonor. You're gonna have to represent, but, but I don't, I don't do any of that because he might murder the poor man. So I'm, I'm just like, no, nah, I'm trying to chill him out, but it's not working. So at the end of our workout, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go talk to him, and I'm like, you're just gonna talk to him though, right? Probably. <laughs> Shit. depends what he says back is what he means and and so like the next day we, we're, we're running our lap and he's over there doing his chin-ups with the 40 pounds of weight tied to his waist and uh and i'm watching him as i do because I'm, I'm not interested in any of that 
and the Indian guy and Isaac run past doing their lab. And he goes, yo, Indio. And Indio looks over with this look of, I've never seen on a grown man's face before <laughs> that I can only ex terror, just terror. He's just like, <laughs> just that like like this grimace of fear and and he was already he, you know he's breathing hard because he's running and he's <laughs> yeah <laughs> morning <laughs> and he's like huh? yeah yeah and he just picks up the pace and keeps on fucking and i'm like did you talk to indio yesterday yeah we straightened that all out <laughs> I, like, I don't even want to know what he said to him i know he threatened him i know he did he, he probably asked him if he was a chomo it just it was just so it, it seems so well, how easy do you to fuck up like, in there i was gonna say how do you how, how do you clear your name it's like no i definitely don't like kids like i got some pictures like, of some grown woman jerk off to this let's see <laughs> <laughs> no 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 oh. sitting there, it's like a kick in say up. no more snow this is my court hey, everybody come here he's gonna prove he's not a chomo <laughs> Look at it, it's all flaccid. <laughs> oh, you don't like a grown woman, do you? All right, bring my little grandbaby over here and oh, my knife. Shit. Oh, man. No, you never know. What <laughs> Wait, what? what's the knife for? <laughs> oh, we're back to the sounding. Knife is for you, <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, hold the knife. <laughs> <laughs> I can just picture you there, like, I just want to go have chili and read the rest of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get snow into Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that would work? I don't know. Because, <laughs> you know, during our runs, I'd tell him about what I was reading. And, you know, I'm four books into the Harry Potter series. I've read it before. I like it. And I'm like, yeah, man, it's this little wizard kid. He didn't know he's a wizard. And, you know, he's he's evil wizard. Voldemort's trying to... Voldemort? What? Yes. You know, it's this Voldemort guy. It's, who? The bad guy's trying to get him. And, you know, he's, he's, go he's going to wizard school and he falls in love and, and does magic and trying to explain this to, shit to him he's like yeah i'd like to read some of that so i give him books one and two he never made it out of chapter one he never made it out of chapter hey one hey man i just one. thought i would tell you this shit's fucking dumb <laughs> 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 nobody's fighting chomos or anything <laughs> uh, if i ever go to prison i want a snow I, I need I, a snow, a savior. It someone like you got a you got a good draw. You got a good hand for for your two two months. You know, no, I have his full he, name. He made a good hand. I I I did my best to make friends with Mr. Snow. I have his real name and his prison number uh, written down in there. I'm gonna next week. I'll look him up online and I'll get I'll get a picture of Snow. Hopefully, I should be able to look it up and uh, and I'll, I'll I'll be able to show. Oh yeah, if you have can we send him like, some presents? Uh yeah, you could send him cash. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Was it through uh, well, JPay? I, 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 I was thinking more like ironic, funny gifts. You can send him books and letters. Ooh, children's catalogs. Oh, he would love Harry Potter. We'll send him Harry Potter. <laughs> send him a baby gap catalog. That is the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. That the, just... the Chomos <laughs> hanging out in the library waiting for issues of Toddler's Monthly, which is some... <laughs> For some reason, subscribe to the prison to show up so they can cut out pictures of babies wearing Uggs or some shit. Yeah. Like, that's... That is how wild. do they Are they just the, wanting to get fucked with and beat up? Well, there's just no attempt to rehab them, right? Like, not at all in prison? I don't know. How do you rehab a fetish? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. They, I, tried, to, I, they tried to rehab me from mar smoking marijuana. <laughs> and look at you. Marijuana free for over you 60 don't think, days. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I could worked. smell it. I could smell it in there. It was such bullshit. It's like you've got me here for marijuana, and I can smell it every day. It's like putting a fat guy and locking him up in a KFC bathroom. This is torture. <laughs> this is torture. I can smell it at right outside. Can you switch drug, states? How hard you? is that? Sorry, go ahead, buddy. Did, oh, do they drug can, test us? No. Can you switch states? How hard is it to do that? You can go just about every anywhere you want, but it takes 18 months. You have to be in a place for 18 months to transfer. It, do you have two years probation? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, me personally. I thought you meant prisoners in general. I thought maybe oh, you'd oh. like to live in a different state. Ah, uh, that wouldn't help me. Like, because like, I got federal charges. I know. I, I, I see what you're thinking there. Yeah, it wouldn't matter if I was in Colorado where like weed is legal. Like, I still couldn't smoke there because I'm on this federal probation or whatever. Um, uh... Oh, I that would only that. that would only that would only cause be an issue if you were dealing with federal agents like if you were in california as so long like if you had 13 pounds of actually I, that's too much i, I have <laughs> a federal probation officer though 
13 oh, pounds. Who drug so tests you do him. have to check in with him. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce was asking about the drug test thing. In in yeah, prison, yeah. though, did they test you throughout yeah, your tenure? Not, no, they, they don't test at all unless, like, um, there's a reason to test. But but it's expensive to test, and they're trying to come as far. The farther under budget they are, the bigger their bonuses are. So they mm. don't want to waste money. Well, yeah, and then they definitely test. don't want to drug test and be like, shit, there's people smoking. There's people doing heroin in our prison. So. Yeah. And there are there are people doing heroin in the prison, um, but but yeah yeah I'm on federal probation so like I've I've been tested twice since I've been out. Um, but I think I'll do. Out. Wow. Yeah yeah. You've been um, out and, for and, two weeks. Uh, not even that. No. Yeah, Less seven than... days. Um, <laughs> oh my math is way off. It's been two episodes, like, hey. Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seven days. Because I got out, we did an episode, and then this is the right. Yeah, one week later, seven days. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well, when I got out, I like the next day I reported and I, I drove up there and, uh, I met this, the senior uh, probation officer who, who formerly was my probation officer, real nice guy. I like him a lot. We watched the same YouTube channels about cooking hmm. and, huh. uh, and, uh, and he tested me. And then I came back, uh, Monday, this just past Monday and I met my personal probation officer and he tested me and he told me like, you get tested like three times, like right away. And he's like, we'll just try to knock those out as fast as possible. And then I'm going to be on the code of phone system, I think, for a couple months, which is where you call in. I have a personal number that corresponds to me. A voice reads out all these three-digit numbers. If they call your number, I drive this place just down the road, and I get drug tested there. Uh, so, so they test for everything. I have a question. And this lasts for two years? Um, yes and no. Like, 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 I think the drug testing, I think the code of phone thing, for example, I think that that's only going to be for a couple more months because – I was on it for like a year and a half and, and you know, I, I never, I w didn't do any fucking drugs, I guess. I don't know how it's put it. And, uh, I think as long as I don't get in any trouble for like the first half of my probation, I can go back before the judge and maybe be like, Hey, can you let me out of this thing? I've been good for a year. And, and I think he can release me and let me out in a year and, and I'd be able to do anything I want. So hypothetically, well, if you had a, a normal day job, either office hours or your uh, car salesman type job. How difficult would it be to comply with probation while you're trying to earn a living? Not at all. They'll work around you. Okay. They'll, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll work around you because they want you to be, you know, stable and, and employed and all that stuff. Oh, cool. Um, and I think I'm going to have a new, an, another probation officer anyway. Like I met with a guy uh, just the other day and he was like, you know, I think we're going to put all your relevant information into the computer and it'll spit out your threat level. And, uh, and he's got like a, like a chart over there that goes from like blue to red, like four or five levels. And he's like, I think you're going to be a low. And I'm like, if I'm not a low, I don't know what is. <laughs> and, uh, and I had, and it, I mean, just barely more than a hundred guns. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> and, uh, and I, so I think I have a different probation officer. I think it'll be this young lady who just got promoted to a probation officer. So she'll probably be my officer, uh. Um, yeah. soon enough. I think that question was like... my bias showing through. Like I have this idea that like, man, they put you in there, you come out broke and hopeless and then you can't get a job and this and that. And it's only some of that is accurate, I guess. If you're yeah. broke going in, you're going to be broke coming out. But the, yeah. like, wouldn't it be cool if that didn't have to be like, you know, if you earn more than eight cents an hour and you could have a little nest egg coming out and hit land on your feet. Eight cents an hour. That is crazy. Like that that's just nuts. slavery. Yeah. It's about 20 bucks a month. Why, oh why my do you, god! How do they how Christ. do they uh, how do they justify the fact that they're paying you eight cents an hour? Like why well, why, why even pay you at that point? Yeah, I'd rather have um, nothing, more dignity. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, whenever they abolish slavery, um, what the part they they always read the first sentence. They never read the second sentence of that of that um, of that amendment. Um, the second part is, except in the case of punishment. Does it you know, say that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So so it's it's literal slavery. Um, they force you to get a job, and they'll punish you if you don't work it. Hmm. That's but you, can, you, you weren't there long enough to get jobs. Uh, I was. There was some kind of mess up in the system, and I, I didn't get medically cleared until I had a week left to go. And uh, and then they they assigned me a job on the day before my release, and, and at about two in the afternoon. And uh, I, I almost was like, "So what do I need? Who do I report to? What work do I do?" But then I was like, "Don't say a word. Walk away." Yeah. And I just walked, <laughs> <laughs> I just walked right back to my bunk opened up fucking another Stephen King novel and, and, and burnt the day away. And so, so I never worked a minute in terms of making two months go by. Do you think that not having a job was kind of cool and like making life easy <clears throat> or kind of sucked? Cause it made days long. It's a mixed bag. Uh, it, it may have sped time up. 
Um, but at the same time, it may have just been something horrible that I didn't want to do. Like I didn't want to be outside running a pressure washer on those 105 heat index days. I didn't want to be cooking the food when I wasn't even eating the food. Um, I didn't want to have to wear a goofy uniform or anything like that. I would, I, and, and I would have to take multiple showers then. And that would, and there was a long period of time where I was afraid I was going to get raped in the shower. So I really didn't want to have to take more than one shower a day. And I also didn't want to have to, um, do that much laundry. I know that sounds like a stupid thing, but like it's kind of annoying doing the laundry. Like you have to make sure you're up out there at 6 a.m. and you're getting it given to them and you have to make sure you're there at 10 30 a.m. to get it back. Cause if you sleep through that, he won't give it to you today because he's a he's a super racist and he hates white people. And it's it's a whole thing. <laughs> really? But yeah, yeah. They uh this white guy came in, this captain, and he was a real like no bullshit kind of guy. He's like, everybody get back here. And he's just like I'm going to sniff out the drug dealers and I'm going to clean up this camp. We're going to start with pressure washing and scraping paint. And, and everybody is just like at attention, like scared de to death of this guy. And, and the boss before him had been a black lady and everybody would just be like, mm-hmm, what do you need us to do? Yeah, we'll get right on that. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> and so, so when this guy like leaves, like the, the laundry guy is like, I'd have to use the N word a lot to explain what he said, but he's like, y'all, y'all brothers. I use y'all brothers. <laughs> Martin Luther King would roll over his grave. Y'all brothers up in here. That white man come in. Everybody's yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. <laughs> white man. What you needs me to do, sir. Y'all ignorant brothers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking funny. It's funnier with <laughs> brother, I, I think. I'm two cells away from him, and I'm just like, I'm, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was the job? What, what, what was oh, the yeah. job they gave you? I was an orderly, uh, basically oh. a janitor. Uh, oh, okay. You know, sweep up, uh, mop a little bit. I was so happy I never had to be on bathroom cleanup duty because the bathrooms <laughs> were so filthy by the end of each day. In the oh. morning, 8 a.m., they're immaculate. It's like a Chick-fil-A bathroom. They are holier than thou. They are wow. nice. All right? Whoa. Sparkling. My pleasure. By 8 p.m., <laughs> it smells of shit and tobacco in there. And it, it they have really... I'll never forget the day somebody shat on the toilet seat. And, like, the head orderly is like, What ignorant brother has done shit on the toilet seat? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody goes, Which one? <laughs> what the fuck difference does it make? Which brother has done shit on i like to use two <laughs> dude it sounds like prison is full of hilarious people it does yeah, doesn't it I, I, I just feel like they got sort of a knack for stand-up comedy you know like, a lot I, of this stuff wasn't funny at the time it was very serious uh like the guy whose anyway, towel was stolen delivery. like no, that was funny yeah that was funny <laughs> that was, was real were there crap. any other just full-on funny not scary moments or was it I'm sure just the aura around you of being in prison makes everything scary. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Are you going to keep any of these lifelong friends? No. Fuck no. I don't even think I'm technically allowed <laughs> no! to speak with them. No. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'm allowed to consort with felons. So what? I was never in the military. But my understanding <laughs> is part of what boot camp is, is they put people in a common, horrible situation and they bond to each other. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they're like, they just look like, this is, this is fucked up, man. Yeah, this is fucked up. And, but... While you hate the man, you love each other. That didn't happen in prison. I mean, I like some of those guys, but I never want to fucking see them again. No, because I want I, snow for the show. I mean, it's, it's probably. <laughs> I don't the, think the, it's really legal for snow to be on. Look, I, I I will ask my probation officer that question in particular. But and and if it is at all possible, he would absolutely come on the show. He oh. absolutely would. He'd Can be, you he'd imagine be... Woody before the show being like, Snow, your audio sucks. Get it together, man. And he's just like an angry... Yo, man. Mr. Gamertag, I did a little Googling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a so meme. I read a few articles about you. Oh, I don't know what a meme is, Mr. <laughs> Pedophile. <Yeah. laughs> That's a meme. It's just a meme. That's the sound a man makes when you spike him in the lung. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah dude. it's I, I don't think yeah I'll, I'll ask him if that's even a potential possibility but he he may get out in april but his hopes weren't high because they uh, they told him that he was a former gang member and therefore a threat to society oh. did 
Now, Chomo, his plans for post prison, do they include going back with the family? And no, he said he was going to hang up his gloves, mm-hmm. which I guess meant retire from crime and go spend some time with his many children and his wife that he's been with since he was 13 years now- old. <laughs> As you do, yeah. So yeah. his yeah. he had his first kid when he was, I think you said thirteen and thirteen and a half. And a half. Um, Jesus Christ! <laughs> now, <laughs> dude, that was the that was that kid was cool. He yeah, was like so much cooler than at me. Twelve and three quarters. Uh, yeah, he's no, like forty eight. Impregnating at twelve and three quarters. Yeah, he impr- was strong, virile young sperm. Yeah, uh, he was like forty eight, and he said that his son was, I think, like two years older than me. I I I I think that math checks out. Son's thirty five <laughs> and he's forty eight. They could be like colleagues. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you know, like they go out to the bar together, and you know, it's just like, oh, your brother's here. Like, yeah. No. Thirteen yeah, year old so... Woody used to think about you know, how I would seduce a woman, and part of my pitch was like, I'm pretty infertile. I'm sure. Like I barely <laughs> hit puberty. <laughs> Come on, baby, roll with me. It, That's yeah. my son. And that 21-year-old is my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. D- did you say he had grandkids? Yeah. How old was his son when he had a kid? Do we... I don't know. We don't that know. I don't that. know. Um, I, he, had a, he had a crazy scenario. Maybe you could look it up um, and, and like sort of, oh, that might tell people. It doesn't matter. His nephew got shot in the head by a cop while, while I was there on the outside, like, like in Texas somewhere. Like apparently he was like, the kid has some sort of mental issues or something like that. Snow wasn't very eloquent. So, so I don't, I, he couldn't really explain these things to me very well, but he wasn't all there. And the kid is like walking in the sidewalk with a stick, according to snow, who knows? And a police got in some sort of confrontation with a cop. The cop shot him like three times and once in the head. You know what city it happened in? No, no, no. Not, no not, if I knew that, that would the probably get the job done, someone. but I don't. It should be easy to narrow down. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and it you was shot a real person sad. of color, Taylor. That'll <laughs> now That'll you know really narrow it. Stories. And it was uh, it, it was like a real sad situation because like the the nephew's mother is in a is in had had a stroke, and so she's all fucked up, like living with Snow's wife. And Snow, so Snow's wife's like working graveyard shift, taking care of her sister, and not telling the sister that the sister's son is in the hospital, like dying, and they're charging the son with assault, aggravated assault. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you should probably tell him to get a lawyer. You know, he's like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, he, yeah. <laughs> you probably do need that attorney. Yeah, you really need an attorney there, Snow. They're gonna. It sounds like the cop may have done something wrong, and in that situation, they try to blame it on the person that got shot. And it sounds like he's not able to speak for himself since he got a bullet in his head. So maybe get a lawyer. Mm. What was yeah. uh? What was the funnest part of prison? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> the reading, the chili, sleeping. Was there was there never a point where you, while in prison, said to yourself, "Well, this isn't that bad." Like, not. I mean, I'm sure you said this isn't that bad, but I, like, was there ever a point where you were content? I don't know. Like, w- right after you get out of the shower and you're all clean and you feel good, and you know, you brush your teeth and and maybe you're eating like the first chili of the day. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and watching TV or, uh, or or reading a book like that was a pretty decent time. Yeah, you know, it was kind of quiet in there. A lot of people were at their jobs of choice, and uh, or or they were just away. And you know, it, was, it, was, it got it got quiet enough that you kind of hear your own thoughts. And and so maybe around then, like uh, like like if I was watching TV and I had my chili and I had a diet Pepsi and uh, I just had gotten in the shower, I was I was that was about as good as things ever got. I would say. Yeah. You probably couldn't relax, right? You could just never relax. It was just so loud. I just remember laying there trying to read my book and thinking like, I hate these brothers. I hate all these brothers. (laughs) (laughs) Why won't these brothers shut the fuck up? (laughs) That's that's, you, you, You alluded to something earlier with the shower and... (laughs) <laughs> that sounds to me like the most frightening scenario. Was it was it exactly like you envision in the movies where it's like a bunch of naked dudes with their no, backs? No, it's the opposite. Other? It's the opposite of that. It's uh, showers are very private. Um, oh. I, 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 I'll, I'll go through it kind of quickly because I did it last week. But you, you no, walk no, up yeah. to a shower curtain and you yell shower. And the, the people who are already in there, they call back and they tell you which shower heads are free and occupied. You know, oh, one, two, and three. And you're like, all right, I'm going in three. Uh, three was the good one. And uh, and so you 
you walk down this lane and each shower shower head comes out from the wall and there's a block wall that's about on me it came up to like um uh, no it was pretty tall i mean i could it's, see it's like it, a it gym came, shower yeah there's block walls separating you and you've got like oh. maybe three feet by three feet by three feet cubed and there's a shower curtain behind you so it's it's rather private but that it's, you know if they want to come get you they'll still come get you and somebody I was, I was had kind of say yeah Somebody had made a threat against me and had gotten back to me that they wanted to get with me. So, so I was I was a little worried about that. So, holy shit, a little yeah. worried. I would be a lot worried. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was. I would be going quite a few, quite a few days without a shower. <laughs> yeah, they give I mean, you shit about that. Like, you, you can't. You can't. Like, like, like the things that you know. It, it, like, like one day I, I told him I, I pissed and didn't wash my hands, and and snow get, tells me the next day he's like, yo. Heard you didn't wash your hands. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, when? <laughs> when? Yesterday, right after you did it, I guess. And I'm like, fuck, I, you know, I didn't even touch my dick, man. I just thought I'd get on out of there, you know? Wow. They don't know. For all they know, you pissing right on your hands. They need to see you scrubbing. And I'm like, well, I'll <laughs> lather up from now on, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. I, so, so I did, you know, and the same thing about like not bathing, you know, there were guys in there who like just gross guys who just smell and stink and, you know, they, people would talk about them and, you know, so I, and, and I got to have a shower. I don't feel human if I don't have to have yeah, a shower. I was going to say, I can't. Of course, you don't feel too human after a rape either. So you got to weigh the, <laughs> weigh the options out. Well, that's the, I mean, did you, were you able to like, did you immediately start looking for protection when you hear that threat? That's, I, I was looking for protection the moment I got there. That's how I'm at snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What'd you yeah, do? Did you walk around like, hey, I'm just trying not to get raped, guys? <laughs> it's like, who? Uh, I, I just like found the larger people that were in there and, and made friends with them, you know, one way or another. Like, like there was a big black guy that I, I, I promised him I'd give him my radio and headset when I left because I noticed his was busted. And, uh, you know, he, and he would, he, he would not, he was the one who warned me about the rape. And he was all, he would like bring me stuff all the time because it was $100 that I had promised him essentially between the headset and the radio. And so he'd bring me a six pack of Diet Pepsi because he knew, knew I drank those, or he'd bring me some flip flops, uh, like twenty five dollars or something like that, because I didn't have any flip flops. And you know, he'd just come by all the time and just if he, hey, you need anything? I'm like, no, I'm pretty good. You sure you want some Diet Pepsis? I can get you some. I'm like, yeah, I would like some Diet Pepsis. I'm only, <laughs> I only have fifty, you know, and and yeah. uh, and he'd go get me some because I I I love Diet Pepsi. I mean, that's how you I'm keep those now. cold. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, they came in six packs, and it's uh, I think they were like two dollars and twenty cents a six pack, so fairly affordable. Yeah. But uh, I had this really big uh, half gallon jug I drank out of. It was like double insulated, so like an exterior wall and, and an interior wall with a with a layer of air between, and the top like pops off, and there's like one of those plastic bendy straws that goes in. And we had an ice machine, so I would put a little ice in there, put my can of Pepsi in there, cover it up with ice the rest of the way, and then fill it up with water. And half an hour later, you have like an ice cold can drink. Nice, huh. nice. That would be a That's nice smart. little treat in prison. A little it diet absolutely Pepsi, is. Diet Dr Pepper option no, is prison an uh, only Pepsi option, or is Coke in prison? <laughs> they rotate. They rotate. Right as I was leaving, they were rotating over to Coca Cola. Uh, it was Pepsi. It was Cherry Pepsi and Diet Pepsi, uh, and there was Fago Cola, Fago Orange, and Fago oh, Juggalos. Yeah, the Juggalos. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, ICP baby, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and and you know they had also like tropical fruit soda drinks and stuff like that. And uh, do they have know, lunchables? The no, because you can't don't no refrigeration. Oh, only dry yeah. goods. Only only, only things that you could store goods. at. So room beef jerky was probably pricey. Nobody really wanted beef jerky. It didn't seem like uh, the popular items were candy. Uh, these things called what were those things called? Chico sticks, I think it's a, it's a. It's peanut yeah. butter covered in toasted coconut, mm -hmm. and it's like a it's like a long stick, and they were like ten cents a piece, and the, these guys oh, are I'd always be crushing eating. those. That yeah, sounds yeah. good though. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't eat any. Uh, I mean, that's only an hour and fifteen bars. minutes worth of work. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, crunch bars and Snicker bars and stuff like that. Um, all like ramen noodles and soup in a cup. Um, they had oysters uh, in a bag. Um, that's Oyster. surprising. Like pre-cooked oysters? Yeah, it was disgusting. Uh, Snow asked me if I wanted a sushi bowl one day, and I was Ooh, like, I was like, I was like, I love sushi. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, wait a minute, Kyle, 
you have an actual old Japanese man craft your sushi while you watch him do it <laughs> using a th using a thousand year old blade in Atlanta. <laughs> you pay thirty dollars for a piece of sushi. Sushi that snow is not gonna roll out some fancy sashimi. That's not happening. Maybe you should ask what he's talking about when he says sushi. He's like, yeah, you know, get some mackerel and some oysters and. And he's just talking about taking every fish product and throwing it in a bowl with some mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, oh, mayonnaise, some though. Mayonnaise. Oh, no. Dude, Dude we, that sounds fucking gross. We Wait. had shelf-stable mayonnaise. It's just in your locker all day. That's actually how mayonnaise. all mayonnaise should be. It's called blue plate mayonnaise or blue pate. I don't Why know. Why hasn't the others. Hellman's caught up with this technology? Dude, Dude, not probably because it's not as good. Bring out the best. It was all right. I I, I made a bit of tuna salad. Uh, that that was the thing that required that a little bit of crafting because they don't have relish in there. So you had to make your own relish. Blue um, plate mayo. Yep. Yeah. How did you make your own relish? I stole pickles from the kitchen and chopped them up with a knife that was hidden on the hot water heater. <laughs> you gave <laughs> away the knife it. location. Ah, who fucking cares? <laughs> <laughs> the other one's above the exit sign on the front door. <laughs> Snow's got his MP3 player. Oh, I hope Greg is now. watching. <laughs> He's like, ah! Where the jig is, is up. <laughs> Get my knife Move by the, the knife. hot water here. Move it! <laughs> <laughs> that was a surprising thing you told us about prison, is that these knives were just communal. Where mm. it was like, a select group of cool guys were like, hey, there's a knife at the you know, heater. There's a knife under this thing in the bathroom and a knife over here. Put it back when you're done or we're going to be pissed. And like, that was it, right? Yeah. Like just. Yeah. And what was and the knife used for? It was just for like quality of life shit? Yeah. Chopping onions and bell peppers and stuff like that. But it is so a knife. Wait. Like, it, it, like uh, yeah. it's communal. So you're really giving everyone the ability to defend themselves. But nobody's doing that. No, nobody's using weapons that I, I don't, I don't think that's going to be, I, I mean, Snow told me that he got in a fight there with a guy who had a chank, as he put it, a chank, not a shank, <laughs> a chank. <laughs> he had a chank. Um, yeah. Yeah. He had a chank. I said, I wanted to box him. He pulled out the chank and I said, come on, I'm not scared of no chank. I'm going to cut you up with these bows. <laughs> it's like. I picked the right Bows, guy. Elbows. <laughs> I like you, Mr. Fuck. Snow. Hey, Mr. Snow. This guy fucks. Excuse me, Mr. Snow? Um, <laughs> I'll never forget it when he told me his name was Snow. It's so weird when somebody first introduces themselves with a nickname. I'm sure Woody knows this. It, it, has it ever been awkward when you tell like a, a banker or somebody like, yeah, I'm, I'm Woody. Yeah, it, it just, that's kind of a normal name, though. For it, me, it know. is. Yeah, I, like, I've had yeah. it since I was little. I don't balk at it when I when I heard it. And when you when I first heard it, I, did, I didn't. But when a man says his name is Block, <laughs> you're just like, for real? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I killed Why? my mom with a Block. <laughs> oh, oh God! Holy shit! Yeah, you earned that nickname. This Block. <laughs> yeah, this, this one. Right here. Is, that, is that wet blood on your Block? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so fucking stupid in there. I'm so glad I'm out of there. I'm so no, glad. We're so glad you're We out couldn't there. have vending machines because the motherfuckers would break into them. You know, I'm, I'm like, why can't we have a vending machine? These cards that we have have a, a, a magnetic strip to be swiped. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have a vending machine? I was like, you know, they got cool vending machines now with like hot coffee and pizzas in them. They have yeah, Japanese oh, girls' panties. Yes. <laughs> oh, that would have been a big seller in there. I'm going <laughs> to tell you right now. We gotta make a, you, We should start making like prison centric unbreakable vending machines, you know, and just market them to prisons everywhere. Just like put baby gap catalogs in there and baby gap. They do that at schools where they get broken into too much. It's just a vending machine with a giant cage around it that only lets you reach it by hitting the buttons, swiping or grabbing your your yeah, shit that you bought. my high, like, my high school had that. Yeah, my high school had that too. So that that didn't happen in prison. They would, they would just bust into those. Too high tech. That, that's what they. That's what Snow told me. Because I was asking, I was like, why don't they give us one? And they said, well, you know, it people people fucking rob them. Damn, people dude. fucking rob them. I was about to ask, do you have any cool photos from prison? And then I was like, of course not. Dude. <laughs> you can though. You can. There's a fucking booth you can go to and like. It, like I a remember, kissing I booth, I'm picturing. Yes, yes, and it costs. 
What if I'd gotten one? Oh my god, what if I'd gotten one with me in snow? That's you what I'm saying. <laughs> we go back in time. I'd have one with me in snow. Fucking fucking light light like wait, wait, who wait, uses there... the who uses the photo booth? Wait, hold on. Hold on. Who uses the prison photo booth with their buddies? Like, do they go, like, no one uses it with their buddies. Let me make that clear. <laughs> no one. But if you want to send a picture of yourself back to your homies, you know, how else are you gonna do it? Is it so like the go, kind of thing you find at Dave and Buster's where you pull the curtain back and just sit there? Yeah. yeah. It would be so that awesome. It takes four photos. If and it's you expensive. Just go and block all the <laughs> pictures. Uh, several dollars a picture. Uh, a couple max. <laughs> yeah. You just feed the fish in there, not even in the pouch. <laughs> it's two days worth of work. It won't take my mackerel. I just... <laughs> Man, prison sounds hilarious, but only because it didn't happen to me. Yeah, right. I was yeah, yeah, it's awful. It's so like, not thank fun. God Kyle's a good storyteller because this could have just been very dry and not that funny at all. <laughs> no, he's but I'm over here going I'm like, maybe I want to try a little stint in prison. Can you give me like a week? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> probably, probably would. Yeah. You know, just, just you just go visit. You know, you get a job there. You could do that. Yeah, it, it was. There was so much corruption um, uh, throughout the whole thing. You know, so much favoritism and stuff like that. Like, like. Snow wanted to get a job up in, up the hill where they have actual workout equipment and, and you know only but only the black guys got those jobs and, you know the only black guys worked in the laundry. Um, it, th- there was mostly black people there, so black people were sort of in positions of power as far as who got to decide who got to do what. So it was hard to get into those preferable jobs. The Did kitchen you try was not being white. Uh, you could try that, but it, it's hard. <laughs> yes. um, the kitchen was a mixed bag. You got access to the food and you could steal some, but also you had to make everybody's food. And that meant you had to get really fucking early and, and be in there working. So. I feel like I wonder, wait, wait, was the there ever ones. like, was there anyone that was like legitimately talented in the kitchen? I know that like the materials that you have to work with are limited, but you know, conceptually there's gotta be, excuse me, one person that's like, yeah, man, I was like a pretty decent chef like i can make some not shit food from your shit ingredients i feel like there's got to be a couple guys out there that's that's snow again that's snow again snow would make these bowls for me uh you know we, we have tupperware and uh he made me a nacho bowl one day that was like doritos and nacho chips covered with like refried beans and kel- and queso and salsa and jalapenos oh, hell yeah that and like chili really beans good. i was like, <laughs> I was like hey yeah. sign me up. i'm sitting there eating it with a spoon and my cellmate comes in i'm just like <sighs> <laughs> Get your ass back, Greg. It's just mm-hmm. I'm just watching my friend eat a bowl that I want to eat as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk to my locker tonight at 4 a.m. angrily about it. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, what you got? What you got? Did you make that? I'm like, nah, Snow made it. Who's Snow? I'm like, the guy who walks by herself four times a day and I talk to, man. Are you insane? But I was saying, I'm, I'm like, the big fucking Mexican guy that I walk with every day, man. The, every yeah. day. Who comes here every day, three <laughs> times a day. You know, I don't get it, Greg. How, are you retarded? I hated Greg so much. I liked him. I didn't, I didn't have anything against him. I just couldn't stand to have to share such a... Cl- he lived below me. <laughs> I could reach down and grab him if I wanted him. Like, like our lockers are touching. Hey, Greg just- sucks ass. <laughs> preferable bunk position. Now, it seems like everyone wants the bottom bunk. Everybody wants that bottom bunk. I Why? like top Air bunks. Why is bottom is better? better? Cuz you don't have to climb up a ladder and uh you don't ha- and you're you're right there on the ground you can just hop up, you can just you just sit down and get in. Um they just want that bottom bunk. Whenever a bottom bunk became available in my cubicle, my cube, I was like, fuck it. I don't want that. I'm up here. I'm up high. It's cooler up here. I feel like the yeah. AC is blowing right on me and I can see if the rape when the rape's coming. You know, I got <laughs> Yeah, it's <laughs> nice to get a little warning. I got the lay of the <laughs> land up here. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, is that a rape I see? I don't want this to be like a <laughs> catheter removal. I want to mm. see it coming. <laughs> no surprise, rapes. Rapes coming. Yep. <laughs> From the south. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a wet uh, one. I like the top bug too. I always thought it was the better one. I I, I don't know. I feel like a, a parent, you know, perching on top, establishing my dominance. Yeah. Well, you have I a was, better vantage. You have a better vantage point, I assume, over right. Yeah. That's People what I'm saying. It's hard to get in the top bunk. What's wrong with you, you unathletic fuck? Like you can't that get too. into a top I had bunk. No problem. Yeah. yeah. I, I I had my, we, we each have or each assigned like a plastic chair. So I just backed my plastic chair up to the ladder. So I would step off it, take one more step, and throw myself in, and I'm up there. The only problem is I felt bad getting up in the middle of the night to piss or something because I'm yeah. squeaking and waking Greg up. But Greg don't care. He never complained once. 
Yeah, Greg <laughs> wakes you up with his There's fucking my roommate. Hair formula. I yeah. think he has to pee again. And also, you yeah, can, he you is. Can sleep, sleep, you can sleep whenever you want. Dude. You go, Kyle yeah, Center the, Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> center, center Bowl. Nice aim. My my Sally got some good aim. Listen, Sally taking aggressive piss. Yes, he is. He don't hit the sidewall. Uh. Let him know. Ring it out. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a fat stream right there. Sally got a hog. Sally got a hog in his pants. Yes, sir. He don't so, skip the pork. Was there a ba- was there a bathroom in your cell, or did you have to get up and like walk somewhere? To- you had to get up and walk to the end of the dormitory. Uh, there's like 80 of us in a dorm, so, and we're sharing one urinal, four toilets, and five shower heads, and about oh, six sinks. Tough. That is so, like EDC. <laughs> that's like Coachella porta potty. It is like Coachella. <laughs> it stayed rather clean. Uh, it stayed rather clean. I, you know, wow. I, I'd usually go during, like, like I would shit in the mornings. I, I would do my best to to get in there early, hit it, hit it when it was clean. Yep. And uh, that's the and, only time I shit once and a day shit in the very morning. quickly. Just, just really try to get it out and get out. Uh, oh, that's the other thing I bought from the uh, commissary that is a must-have when you go to prison: toilet paper. Buy the pr- commissary toilet paper because it's Charmin or some shit, and it's. Ooh. I-, I came walking out with my bag of stuff, and, and some some guy noticed I had the toilet paper, all four rolls of it that I paid like seven or eight dollars for, and he was like, "Hey, how much is that TP?" And I'm like, "I don't know, man, like six, seven dollars. That shit's soft as a motherfucker." Mm. <laughs> and I went, "Good to know, because <laughs> because my ass is bleeding, and it's not from the it's not from rape yet." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy that shit. toilet paper in there is the worst airport toilet paper you've ever seen. And we're Nothing's assigned seen. rolls. There isn't a roll in there. You get three rolls a week, I think, which is way overkill in my opinion. Yeah, like, is is it thin paper. too? So thin, so thin and rough. It literally on the side it says made proudly by blind people. It does. I'm not what? making this up. Let cool. me find what the, the brand. Fuck? I, I guarantee you can find it. Wait, this, so I'm wondering what blind people are like. They, like yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> they, I imagine they like braille toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> this, sounds like, this sounds like the toilet paper you would use at like a national park where you like found a bathroom in the middle of a like a three mile trail yeah, or whatever. I found it. Yeah. That's the, and it's just straight paper. The roughest yeah. paper. It's also used by the military according to this. There um, we go. Yeah. Yeah. Skillcraft Products toilet paper. Created with pride by Americans who are blind. Outlook yeah, right. you can tell. Is that kind of fucked up that the company's called Outlook, but they're blind people? <laughs> 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 but you, you get three rolls. They're getting, they're getting paid more than eight cents an hour, I imagine, right? <laughs> definitely so. Yeah, yeah, you get three rolls of that shit a week, and they're your rolls. So when you go, you take your roll of toilet paper with you to the, the toilet and you hang it up on a little stick like like metal rod that's ha- sticking out of the wall so you've got it there and uh, the, the process was to flush continuously while shitting like continuously like sometimes i'd be like that sounds incredibly unhealthy he is literally i'm not exaggerating for comedic purposes 20 30 flushes in a row Ka-choo, how come so, so that you won't, it's, it's, it's like a courtesy flush. It's so you won't hear him shitting or smell the shit. It's because it's just oh. being taken away. It's, it's like, kind of nice. Yeah. It is kind of nice. Yeah, it, it actually is. Have um, you, did you develop any habits in prison that you took home with you? Like, do you eat your food and guard it? Nah, nobody was going to take my food. It's also, um, it's, it's not like this was like a life, like a lifelong thing that he like eventually adopted. I'm just curious, like, was there any thing that you Come on. learned about that you're like yeah maybe life hack like i'll just do that at home huh i would say the ma- the way i made those chili bowls with the microwave was really tasty and 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 uh, but but i don't know that i learned a new skill in that way um yeah you didn't develop a habit um uh, no i'm definitely not making my bed up in real life like, okay fuck that. <laughs> yeah i had to make it every morning in there like it's fucking the did, army or some shit did they make you make it differently like my, no. I make my bed. I just kind of flatten it out and hang over the sides. It's not army. Type. Tucked it in. You know, it's supposed to be. They told me that in other camps they'd be like real strict about it. Or maybe I think someone was saying that when they were. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg told me that when he was in the medium security prison before that some the a lot of the guards are ex military and so they want it to like Marine Corps standards and mm-hmm. and they'll come in with a with a uh, with a uh, ruler 
Like, oh, it's supposed to be seven inches from cuff to cuff on top or whatever the fuck. And they'll like throw all your shit in the floor and walk away and like come back later. And so he would pay somebody to make his bed, I guess in max, I suppose. I don't know. But he would pay this guy who would make his bed for him every day because the guy could make a bed real well. Hmm. I would just tuck everything in under. I wonder what a bed making costs. Probably. I mean, it can't be it can't be enough that it's like maybe one hour of work, you know, right? (laughs) You're not going to get reamed out. But well, it's not going to be for four cents. Then you're not like, wouldn't it be cool to make like, I don't know, a dime in just 10 minutes in prison. And then you get maybe 10, 12 customers. And all of a sudden you like you you get a day's worth of work based on your skill. Yeah, but it's not going to be a dime. But I'm in the same thought process as you. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that oh, it's like more than it's going to be more than a dime because there, there aren't, there isn't currency. The only currency is, is things like Max, you know. So you're, you know, you're going to get a bag of fish or you're going to get a, a bag I'm just of imagine, cookies. Imagine like the Mac King just on a throne of mackerel. <laughs> yeah, I saw a guy who had a whole bag of mackerel. I don't know how many it was. It was like you have a, your commissary bag is a big mesh bag that like can hold a ton of laundry and like you. It's a big fucking sack, and he had one full of mackerel just hung up in his cube. I like know? to think and, that and... the currency changes and he's fucked. Like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> damn it! They moved to oysters. <laughs> the whole the bottom fell out of the mackerel economy. <laughs> what was what was the like? What would the biggest thing you could buy with a bunch of macs be? Like, what would? It... Uh, it, well, you were buying like goods and services. You know, or, or paying off debts, you know, because the people were going to eat the Max usually. Um, but hmm. I'm trying to think. Yeah, like, you know, like, what was the most you would spend? Like, you know, 40 Max for a massage. Or, you know, I don't know what. Oh, I don't know how much a massage would cost. That would, uh, I didn't ask. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, you but... have a different idea of what prison is. <laughs> <laughs> the massages were free. They were, they, <laughs> yeah. they were just given mostly still. against your will. You went straight to massage for some reason. Yeah. I, I was trying to think of a service is what I, I don't know. <laughs> how, much, for, how much max for a blowjob? You know, sir, okay, so here's one. Um, if you want it, so there was a guy who was the orderly who ran the big buffing machine that like polishes floors, the big like industrial one yeah. and for like two max he'll do your cube he'll come in there and he'll just oh. polish cool. the fuck out of your floor and your floor will be gleaming and clean and it's a big concern about a lot of guys were real concerned about the cleanliness of the floor because you walk into the bathroom wearing your sandals and you, you're going to step and piss and then you're stepping back into your cube and stomping mm-hmm. piss on your own floor right. so now every time you get out of bed you got to make sure you step into your sandals because the the floor has piss on it essentially where you live, and so that's so so Greg every day would pour shampoo on the floor, take a towel and soak it in water, put it on the floor, and then like scrub it around with his feet because he didn't want to pay. Wait, wait. So so you didn't have maybe this is naive, but you didn't have two pairs of shoes, a slider, and like your shoe shoes, so you could take your sliders off or whatever before walking into your room that's next level well if you think. if you took them off then you're then you're then you're walking in your socks and piss that's in the hallway no he has two pairs everywhere. of shoes a dirty pair and then you transition to the clean pair yeah i'm saying you're never without like shoes maybe on. right outside like, your cell is a clean like, but outside the cell is piss too but that's no, where, no, no, so that's but... where you wear the dirty <laughs> shoes and then you get to your cell where it's a controlled environment and you switch to the cleanies but yeah. you have to take them off and then like get to them, and they're like deep in your cell. It, it's kind of hard to okay. explain, but that just won't work. But no, I, I had I got you. I had a pair of army boots. I had a pair of sneakers. I had a pair of shower shoes, and I had a pair of flip flops. Um, and I just you know, feel but, like you could. I feel like there's a bet. I feel like you could mitigate the the distance between no. your your piss shoes. But I've not been to prison. You can't so. do it. <laughs> you can't do keep it. them you right at the cell the, door. You just accept that the floor is covered in piss. No, your shoes have to be put away in a certain space. Uh, everything has to be hung in the in its own little place. Like like clothes get hung up a certain way. Lockers stay closed. Beds made. Nothing on the bed. Nothing on top of the locker. It's a whole thing. You know, they, they came through one. Day, the warden came through and opened the Indian guy's locker, and he had opened one of those cellophane bags of cookies, and to preserve them for later, he had put them in an old Fort Folgers coffee plastic jar mm-hmm. she was like contraband, <laughs> contraband for trying to preserve your cookies and i and i went contraband. <laughs> and i looked and she had something i was like 
what does that end? Maybe he is a chomo. <laughs> <laughs> I expected to see like some child porn or like a picture of Snow's grandbaby with like a dick in his mouth or something. Something, something <laughs> awful, be a bad you know? move. Some sort of dirty picture of, uh, of a kid or something. And it's a Folgers jar with some strawberry cream cookies in it. And oh. she's like, contraband. <laughs> I'm just like, I gotta get out of here. Do you I get the question? Did she take it? It's forty years old. <laughs> yeah, did she? Did, did she steal it? Did she? Yeah, take she it? took it. Oh, oh she unbelievable! Ate it. He's uh, like, how am I supposed to keep my cookies fresh? <laughs> you know question. they were in the guard room later, and they're like, free cookies, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? They're fresh. They're smarter than you think. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. So during your two months there, when new people rolled in, did they ever come and like not start at the bottom? Like if I if I jump in there and I've got a big tattoo that says prison in an arc across my chest and whatever it is that <laughs> prison yeah yeah <laughs> like... one of my favorite YouTubers has that tattoo and I didn't make it up <laughs> but, what? but yeah yeah uh, twenty three in lockup I forget what it is but anyway yeah. Uh, um yeah do people roll in and they're obviously like experienced prisoners and they're like oh don't yeah not only that they roll in and they already have friends there. Oh hmm. yeah, that's fucked up. You walk in, you're like Charlie. <laughs> like, I, I I'm saw not it happen. With him or Charlie, like whenever, uh, whenever Block got there and became uh, my cellmate for a short time before he moved to another uh, cube because he knew people on the other side of the dorm. He they had been in Atlanta together, so they had been in the Atlanta camp, and now they were transferring to the Alabama camp, and they knew each other from there. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, what's going on back in Atlanta? This and that, like, like they a lot of them who had been there before knew each other because they were all doing so much time, you know, for four to twelve years and shit like that. So they just knew each other and they recognized each other. So yeah, they they sort of started out and like immediately got a job. Immediately they had privileges and like, oh, you need like it took me like four days to get shampoo, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least. You know, I'm washing my hair with this bullshit made by deaf people soap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm brushing my teeth with a toothbrush that was made by a guy with a wooden leg or something. And, <laughs> and, and, I, and I have no way of getting anything better. But these guys are like, oh, yeah, let's get you a fucking, let's get you some Colgate, motherfucker. You know, they're, they're hooking these guys up right away because they know them and shit. Mm. Yeah, for sure. They they started out at like a level three prison RPG character. It's not already, fair. Yeah. Some people are just yeah. born with advantages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they 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 had all their perks. They they had uh, there's, like a. There's so many jokes. In them. Yeah, they, they, they had their Daedric armor. They yeah, they, yeah. They, they're 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 starting out with fucking Daedric armor. Dude's dude's got a fucking magic rings, magic necklace on. His smithing is already at level one hundred. He can repair. Any of the ebony armor, whatever he needs, he's he's he he's can set. make chinks. He 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 can do the he can do several of the dragon yells, whatever they're called, the fura su or whatever. Fusroda, fusroda. Any of the yeah. dragon yells. He knows yells. them all. He's, our, he's he's already he's he's got everything. He's 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 all set. He's already got a house in uh, White Run. He's he's good to go. <laughs> he's got a house what, in White Run. Was there a was there like an overarching like a mob or like anything that you could be like? This you could point to that body of people and be like, they're the ones in charge of the entire person. Just black people in general. They okay. didn't really have an organization. Um, right, they, they, they they just uh, just just black people in general. I would say it's about 75, 80 percent black people, and then it's white people are definitely the minority. Um, and it didn't seem like there were a lot of young white people. The white mostly old white people there, and mm -hmm. mostly young black people, did and you, mostly. Did yeah. Do you think that it was? Uh, do you think that that's mostly based? Uh, like, do you think that they're uh, like the age discrepancy is based off of like where the judge is sending them? Or like, because you said that prisoners or people get to decide, like, hey, I'd like to transfer in eighteen months. Do you think that like these people, like the the old white dudes, were just like, eh, I want to go back to where I grew up? Or like, like what? Why do you think there's a I don't know. I just noticed that a lot of the white guys, a lot of the white guys were 50 to six, 50 to 70 years old. Um, huh. Like a lot of them were 70. And yeah. There was a guy who was like about 66 years old. We called him Mac. He had served in fucking Vietnam, I think. Holy yeah. Shit. He had, uh, he, nuts. yeah, he, he was 66, 67, something like that. And he could barely walk. He had to use a walker to get everywhere. And, uh, like he couldn't go get his own food and stuff. And how long had he been in? 
nine years, and I think he had like two or three more to go. Damn, what was he? Do you know what he was in for, or was that just bribing? Of... It was bribe. It was a bri It was a bribery thing. But I'm sure he. The fact that he got so much time would suggest to me, anyway. I didn't ask that he had priors right. of some kind. Yeah, priors. Yeah. 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 I mean, so do you? Did is there like some level of respect that people have, or not respect, but like generally, like you don't just beat up the elderly, you know? Like, was there yeah. any like limit that, that everybody was real nice to him? Uh, Snow would actually make that guy food or bring that guy his meals from the cafeteria every single day. That guy never mm. had to go to the cafeteria because Snow would go to the cafeteria, bring that guy his personal meal snow would and then snow would cook himself something so like that guy was wow. getting Snow's meal every day that's i was that's surprised kinda... when you were talking about how just not going to the cafeteria and cooking for yourself is an option like mm -hmm. i would have thought that they force everybody to eat from the cafeteria and there's a designated meal time and i'm basing all of this on the episodes of oz that i watched yeah there definitely is a designated uh meal time you know they call you and it, it's it's like you know, afternoon meal is now being served. Afternoon meal, last call for afternoon meal. Dining hall is closed. And you're like, fuck, I, I, I didn't hear the first. I didn't know it was open. <laughs> Tough <laughs> shit. How, are they listening? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast is 6 a.m. Then uh, lunch is 10:30 a.m. And then dinner is 4 p.m., 4:30 p.m., something like that. And uh, food's fine. Food's fine. I don't know. It's, it's cafeteria food, like from high school. Was it? Was it on? Was it on a previous PKA that we found the uh, prison um, recipe book, or was this something that I'm misremembering? If I didn't, maybe remember so. Here. You know, while I was in there, I was, I was, you know, I, I, a bit of a entrepreneur. So I was thinking, like, ah, a commissary cookbook that so, is a money making idea. That's a good idea. I'm and assuming that I'm assuming that since none of you remembered this this was something that i did at pentacon this guy um had a was like i'm a published author so i looked up his name and his book and he literally had a commissary cookbook on mm -hmm. like how to make like like uh like apple cider and it was like three like mike's like hot tamales with like hot water steep it for like 20 minutes 20 minutes and like pour it in with this hot cocoa kind of shit but yeah there's like a bunch of like convict cookbooks yeah that, uh, yeah these I thought I had come up with an original idea and then, you know, I would be in contact with Kitty, like uh, telling her what to send me and what to buy to send to my house. It was waiting on me when I got out because I, I had all these things that I was planning to do when I got out. And I still do. You know, I, I got an ice cream machine. I don't know. I really wanted some ice cream when I was in there. So I got an ice cream machine. I made some ice cream yesterday. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got a bread uh, machine. Hey, homemade got, ice cream is great. Uh, yeah. so reason when maple you said walnut that, is amazing. I pictured what? your house now being decorated with the soft serve machine. I'm like, he did? motherfucker <laughs> like you really wanted ice cream <laughs> no no it's 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 a big cuisinart uh, like a like bread thing. maker you press a button thing. and go we have yeah, one very actually, nice. rock salt in there no rock salt no get ice salt? cream from the commissary there is ice cream in the commissary but I, but you know i was on a diet in there i was trying to lose as much weight as i could so i was just eating i ate 366 calories a day is what it averaged i lost out to. 35 what? pounds in two months yeah you only lost three you only ate 360 calories a day that was the average that's insane. I mean, like the normal normal diet calories is like fifteen hundred calories a day. Jim. How yeah. did you not? What? It, I'm sorry. So, like, how? What food are you <laughs> ingesting that is only three hundred and sixty calories? Well, there were a lot of days where I didn't eat, and that's why I'm talking wow. about the average. Um, then there was a day where I ate like three bowls of chili, and that's nine hundred calories. That's crazy. No, you, you, you <laughs> that's so insane. <laughs> a bag of chili is th only three hundred calories, and then I'm putting stuff like sriracha and jalapenos and salsa, and all of those things are super low calorie foods. Like, like that's like an extra sixty calories wow. when you put sriracha, jalapenos, that salsa. Your bathroom time because for like two straight months you probably had the <sighs> tiniest little poops. There was there were points where I was so worried about my constipation that I thought I was going to have to tell somebody. <laughs> I know the woman who can how, help how with long, this. <laughs> what was the what, what were your your breaks between poops? What was that like? Like how much time? You won't believe me. No, tell me. <laughs> oh, what was the, what was the biggest break between a shit? Like fifteen days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You went two I, weeks without shitting. Over two weeks, I was worried. And and, if, and when they do the medical like like checkout, she asks, "Have there been any changes in your bowel movements?" And I'm like, "Nope." Uh, <laughs> Kyle, what you, Kyle, fifteen days is incredible. It's, it's, it's for that for that same jaw surgery that I had way back. I I was on an all liquid diet for two and a half months, and that's exactly what happened to me. 
I, I, I no calories and I would shit like every five or six days and it was terrible. Oh you lose a lot of weight. That's I, nuts. Yeah, I lost a ton of weight. I lost like twenty five pounds in two. Months. Was, I was, was so it, it worried. Was I was yeah. so worried. I thought like I, I, I was imagining this shard of shit inside of my intestines that had hardened and could no longer make the turn. And it was just, <laughs> like I was imagining like like the handle of a baseball bat that had been broken <laughs> off. And it was like it was like 18 inches long and as <laughs> stiff and as hard as a rock. And it was just <laughs> oh, and I was just wow. imagining and it, by this time I I had gotten Wings prunes. planted this thought in your head. Yes, the shit turns yes, I was thinking about wings and gangster grandma the whole time, and I, <laughs> I I even bought prunes and raisin bran, and I'm sitting in bed eating dry raisin bran and washing it down with as much water as I I'm trying to make this like <laughs> laxative. Shit like, like, I'm, yeah, and now I'm, <laughs> but nothing happens for three more days, and I just ate a whole bag of raisin bran, and I'm like, that's a lot of calories. I really just wanted to go, and and then I ate a full a whole bag of prunes. And I'm just like, nothing. And I'm thinking like, when I go, it's going to be scary. It's going to be like a lethal weapon. Keep like, flushing. Like, like, they better not try to rape me. They're going to lose their dick. If they loosen this turd rocket up, they're going to be impaled. <laughs> and I'm going to be in here for murder. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Myers, we understand you murdered a man with a shit weapon. Is that true? That's what it says right here in the court document. Your Honor, there's no way he could have known that it hardened into such a sharp shape inside. <laughs> this is not a cognizant bowel. <laughs> it was merely happenstance. What was the shit like after the 15 days? It still wasn't. I, I was like, that's not it. <laughs> that can't be all. I was like, that can't be all. I was like, it's. I, I think I just like that. That was just like a, like the tip of the of the bat. Like like that can't be all of it because I'm still. I was literally imagining the scenario in which like this turd would start coming out and I was going to have to wrap my hand in toilet paper and grab it like a rope and start fucking <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just pulling it out. Because uh, that's what I was mentally imagine picturing that was inside of me. It had been so long. Like I wasn't so eating much, but here's what I did. I was like, all right, in the last 15 days, I've had five bags of chili. They are 12 <laughs> ounces each. I've had one bag of cheese rice. I've had a bag of prunes and a bag of raisin bran. And I'm just picturing what that looks like on a table. And I'm like, that is in my asshole right now. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, it's coming out. Did you ever Wait, think so like, I'm running all day. Like maybe most of it's just being turned into energy. Bare I don't energy. think that's how fucking science works. <laughs> I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works either. I mean, it kind of is. It kind of is. Like if you're burning more calories than you're you're bringing in, then you lose weight. That's what but happens. You don't burn, but some of it is waste product. You know, some of it like, is waste like, product. Absolutely. Yeah. Well. So and, so what happened? What happened at the end? I, I eventually like took some big shits, and it was I got regular, so that I was pooping every three days. But but <laughs> I never had like a daily poop because I was eating so little, and I was so stressed out. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that that first shit after 15 days was it normal? It was just totally fine. No, there were no healthy shits in there. They were just nice. violent, angry yes. shits. Yes. They were all but chilly for. They were all months. painful and dry. Like yeah. like they, they they I felt like the, it, they needed some lubricant. They were dry poops, and they oh. they didn't want to come out. And I was just like, and I wanted to get out of there quickly. And yeah. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. It was. Don't go to prison, boys. Oh, <laughs> oh, fun. Uh, Actually, well, parts can... of it sound like great fun, Taylor. Don't they? Like I want to exercise I mean, with I, with snow. I want to do pull ups. Fun imagining it the same way it's fun for me to imagine being like a marine and coming back from the shitty parts and everybody being like, "Wow, look at that guy." And me being like, "Yeah, you know it." But like <laughs> having to like kick open doors and shoot people, I don't want any part of that. I just want the stolen valor part. Like, there you go. That's, that's how you the do it. That's the great yeah. mentality to have. Yeah, we, that's all that I want. 